the principles by which God created the cosmos. In this chapter, Hermes describes the making of mankind. God created humankind because he wanted there to be a creature capable of appreciating the great beauty of his cosmos. He asks each of the gods who administer the cosmos to provide something to benefit humanity. The sun gives joy. The moon gives sleep. Saturn offers the limits of necessity and the balancing force of justice. Jupiter gives peace and Mars gives struggle. Venus offers love and Mercury wisdom. When God hears what the gods will offer, he thinks humankind into existence. At first, humanity is just a thought, a soul. It is unable to tend and look after the earth as God wishes. So God gives each human a mortal body within which to house the immortal soul. To do this, he first creates nature. She is like a beautiful woman and God makes her mistress of the world. She produces the seeds of natural life. Seeing in the human soul an image of God, nature falls in love and merges with her beloved. This is the blending of body and soul, which produces each one of us. Hence, all human beings have a dual nature, being a combination of immortal soul and mortal body. We honor both sides of our nature when we serve God by administering the natural world for him. Finally, God gives humankind a last great gift, the ability to reproduce. More than this, he makes the process a holy loving sacrament, which reflects the marriage of matter and spirit that creates the cosmos. The sacred bond of love unites man and woman together so that they may share their essential qualities with each other. The creation of humankind. When the creator, who for want of a better name we call Atom, had made the second God, which is the cosmos, he was pleased. His creation was beautiful and wholly filled with goodness and he loved it like his child. In his kindness, Atom wished for there to be a creature capable of appreciating the beauty of his creation. So by an act of will, he created humankind to be an imitator of his divine wisdom and nurturing love. Atom asked each heavenly God in turn, what can you provide for humanity, which I am about to create? The sun said it would shine all day, providing laughter as a source of joy for both mortal minds and the boundless universe itself. The moon promised sleep and silence and to shine by night. Saturn offered justice and necessity. Jupiter gave peace and Mars struggle. Venus proffered love and pleasure. Mercury, who is also called Hermes, said, I will make humankind intelligent. I will convey to them wisdom and knowledge of the truth. I will never cease to benefit all humanity. Atom was glad when he heard these words and gave the command that man should come into being. Mind, the All-Father, who is life and light, gave birth to humanity, which bore his own image, and he took delight in his offspring. Joined to the gods by a sense of kinship, humanity worshipped them with piety and holy thoughts, while for their part, the gods watch over humankind with concern and loving mercy. At first, man was solely eternal and spiritual, but Atom saw that his new creation could not tend the earth unless he sheltered him in a material envelope, giving man a mortal body as well as an immortal soul. 
So Atom bade nature be, and from his voice came a woman's form, so lovely that the gods were smitten with her beauty. Atom made nature mistress of the world. She communed with herself, producing all kinds of seeds, which Atom took hold of with his hands and scattered over the earth, who is the mother of all worldly things. Seeing in man a beautiful image of Atom, nature was filled with insatiable love. She clasped him to her, and they merged to become one in love. Mortal and eternal blended and mingled, so that man may perform the demands of both sources of his nature. Firstly, to serve God, venerating and praising the things of heaven. Secondly, to assist and administer the things of earth by tilling the soil, navigating the waters, building on the land, and by serving each other, that strongest of bonds that links the human race together. Then Atom, the master of generation, bestowed on humankind the sacrament of reproduction. Full of affection and joy, gladness and yearning, and all the heavenly love that is his being. I would have to explain the nature of this compelling sacred bond that binds a man and a woman together, were it not that each one of us, if we explore our innermost feelings, can experience it for ourselves. Contemplate that supreme moment when each sex infuses itself with the other, one giving forth and the other eagerly embracing. At that moment, through the intermingling of the two natures, the female acquires male vigor and the male is relaxed in female languor. This sweet sacramental act we celebrate is shared in secret because if performed openly before impure eyes, the ignorant may mock and the divine power manifesting in both sexes will shy away.